Welcome back to another Consulase video. We're playing Princess Erolon in 4th position. So let's look at the group standings right now. We're currently in 5th place. Um, a win could put us up to 2nd place. And that's what we're looking for, looking for here. Um, row analysis. Let's take a look at the cards. First of all, priority contracts. Not that good of a card. Uh, pretty late. Hidden missive. Probably one of the worst cards to buy. Arrakis World. On, you buy it on, you get a troop, and pretty good for reveal and the uh, ability. Branching Path, a very good card, Benny Access, and has a pretty good ability. Spare Darkness, mm, could be useful, only if you get some Ben Jasper. Anyway, let's play some Doom. So, we start the game. Our opening hand is pretty good. We have a lot of variety. We have our ring so we can track your dagger. If we have the... We're sitting in fourth position, so if we get both of our diplomacies up, that would be pretty... Um, that would be pretty good. But I doubt we're, there's going to be... Like, I doubt all the spaces are going to be open for our, diplo our diplomacy to be used. Um, as we said, now the only two spaces that are available are the liver supplies and secrets. And somebody may be going to secrets. We start with Deliver Supplies. Shadam goes to Contract and picks up the start of our Recall Contract. Interesting take. We have a reel from Paul. Oh sorry, not a reel. Um, he goes to Refinery, sorry. Um, Shadam goes to Assembly Hall just to get Another persuasion, possibly looking up a Rackus Revolt. I doubt he has enough. But we go to contract with our ring um, because secrets is blocked. We pick up immediate, get to Solari. I was contemplating between going to Arakeen uh, and putting a troop in to get to Solari, but I figured that there's a lot of cards that have some contract abilities. Um, so completing contract, getting the has the amount, has the, amount of state, has the same amount of value as Arakeen. We draw a card from Eric and we draw a card from Contract. Ooh, Gurney picks up Arrakis Revolt while we pick up a prepare, prepare the Way. So this is going to be really strong for Gurney. This is going to be a tough uh, fight. The row is not looking too bad. Um, Spacing Guild's Favor is a card on the row that could possibly be of use. This combat does match for us, but it is a combat that people tend to go pretty hard on because of the bump. I simply go to accept contract and pick up the research station contract. Just a threatening research station in case people want to overcommit. And if they do overcommit, uh, we can easily deploy in three of uh, three or four and take it down. Yep, I was taking a look at Paul's um, discard just to see how many daggers he has. Figured he has one dagger, so if I wanted to win this combat, I would have to go heavy and I would have to like not trash my dagger. Right now, I'm currently sitting on six persuasion. Nothing really good for six persuasion. Maybe I could pick up priority contracts um, because I've already completed one contract. I'm probably going to be going to research station. So two more contracts to be completed. With these contracts on the road, mm, maybe. I'm probably going to be taking a trip to deliver supplies. And with Erlon, um, Erlon is one of the leaders that can actually complete the four Solari contract pretty easily. Uh, because she has the ring ability where she can trash a card from her hand and get two spice if it has a persuasion cost of one or more. Here I'm deciding whether to deploy in the combat for three troops. Or maybe even because there's a there's a chance that Gurney ends up going to refinery with his um, ring and then picks up and puts in another um, puts in another troop and then if he has two swords maybe even he even drew Arrakis Revolt on the spot maybe even has that uh, there's so many possibilities for this to go wrong. So I take a while to think over here. Um, we draw our diplomacy, not what we wanted to draw, but that's fine. Uh, 
Yeah, I take away. I take uh, take back my the uh, three troops. I end up trashing my dagger because I figured out that the deck building right now is a more important aspect. And as we expected, Gurney does have his ring. Paul has one dagger. Um, picks up. Uh, Space Eagle's favor and Overthrow is revealed. Pretty good card. We have six persuasion. Um, we pick up a True Trance. This is pretty good. So, um, True Trance is a pretty good card in general because it's another diplomacy and having two diplomacies in general is pretty good. Yep. And Gurney has a Rackus Revolt and two daggers. So my intuition was pretty good here. Uh, we just take a Spice and a True Pack. So we're sitting with a pretty healthy garrison and some decent resources. We could possibly push for um, Great Flat, not Great Flat, it's called Deep Desert now, sorry. Okay, uh, Shaddam goes to... Shaddam goes to Farnery, right? right. Um, we go Espionage, we do have enough for Overthrow now, so that is a possibility. We might early reel for Overthrow if we see that people are trying to get it. I can see Shaddam possibly going to High Council to, you know, threaten Overthrow. And the thing is, if we were for Overthrow, the other cards are not that good. So, if people are putting that much um, effort into going for Overthrow, ugh. But we, I figured that there's no um, point in playing for the risk. I also knew that since I've tracked both of my daggers, I have a guaranteed draw for one Persuasion at least. So I decided not to recall my spot. If we're unlucky and Gurney has 8 right here, or um, Muad'Dib has 8, or Shaddam has 8, then... I mean, I can't really do anything about that. But with 4 cards in hand, I doubt many uh, people have just all 2 persuasions. Especially because not... Um, especially because that, not that many compared to the ways that have been bought. This does leave um, Muad'Dib to get Worms in into this combat, and this is a pretty good combat for him. Um, if he wins it, he gets two Bene Gesserit buffs, and he gets two Intrigues. He is also going to get an Intrigue for a Worm. Ooh, but Shaddam decides to play an Intrigue. And we get Overthrow, so now we are running with three Diplomacies in our hand. We might need to get rid of one of them just because um, we need to have some other possible variety of accesses. But having diplomacies, um, having access in general is a pretty good idea. Moida picks up uh, Junction Headquarters. If he gets the Alliance, he can spend two spies, trash and intrigue, and get a point. Um, Shaddam actually denies Moida these uh, in bumps, these bumps in Ben Jesuit. We get two our diplomacies this round, this round as um, we're playing with a 10 card deck, so, a 10 or 9 card, I, I'm not even sure, but, um, we're expected to draw at least one Diplomacy every turn, if not two. This combat does not match for us, but, if we win it, there is a lot of value for us here, because, uh, if we go Research Station for this combat, then, we could get one of our Waters back, we could also get a Fremen Bomb, and a true pet. Um, but I think the spice here is probably better. Right? I think three spice is pretty good, especially because we we might be looking to um, go shipping. Right? Uh, and get Swordmaster that way. I was deciding between going to possibly um, Desert Tactics or Fremkit. Not Fremkit, sorry. Um, no, sorry, yeah, Fremkit. Uh, I decided to. I decided that uh, drawing was not a good option here because there's a chance that I might draw into my overthrow, and if I draw into my overthrow, then I feel like my uh, true chance is a wasted um, action. Not action, a wasted card, because I do want to be playing my diplomacies the, when I do see them, for faction bumps. But my ring also is a pretty good useful use here. I decided to play my ring right now because siege power is open. If you get first here, it's very good. I decide to use Irulan's alternate ability to trash a card and get two spice, and I play and I trash the true trance. So now we're playing practically a eight or nine card deck. Yep, we're playing an eight card deck. In an eight card deck with one of those cards being overthrow, one of them being a prepare the way. So our persuasion is our persuasion is also pretty high in general. 
Uh, I was hoping to win this combat, but it's unfortunate. Uh, Gurney doesn't want it. But I could always play my Intrigue and cut him out. And that's why in Fremen is probably not going to be doing too much. We pick up a small little Harvester just to uh, get some cards that have some persuasion so we don't end up um, having a deck that we just can't, like, we don't have having an empty deck and an empty discard. That's one of the main challenges with Erlon. Uh, sometimes you can track your deck so much to the point where you just don't have a deck anymore. Okay, so... I decided to take the risk and play my entry. And the risk pays off. We end up getting uh, one Kremlin Bomb, plus uh, water. Oh, I, didn't I did not display all of my strength. Um, yep, this is pretty good in general, actually. Uh, because we deny Gurney the alliance, and Gurney is currently in contention to, lead, uh, to win the game here. And for us, winning the game is absolutely necessary. If we win, we make it straight to the quarters. As expected, we draw our overthrow. Um, we here uh, here's the interesting choice. So sometimes with overthrow, people get get, um, get tunnel vision into going for every alliance, and then you spread yourself too thin, and then there's obviously complications that come along with that. Then people can individually fight you on these alliances. So. Either I could, you know, go directly for MKID, secure the alliance that way, or maybe I could go for like an espionage play, get some spies down. There's a lot of uh, uh, ideas here. Uh, Mojib is probably going to be getting Swordmaster this turn, so we might want to get our sword, get a Swordmaster around next turn if we can place a spy down on. Um, that sword master space. I uh, take a while to think here, but I end up that I end up deciding that espionage is probably the better move here. Um, we get another bump, and the spy I place goes to. Ooh, okay, I place the spy on um, the highlander space for round, uh, round 7 ideas. Um, I believe I did make a mistake here because I should have just... I think I think the Spy would have been better on the Swordmaster space because if I go get um, a Spice... if I go play for Spice Refinery right now, or, I mean, I decided not to, I end up just going heavy in this combat um, just to get some troops and some Solari. We also have the research team contracts, so that completed that. Three Solari there. And uh, research station also allows us to get a spice and slow this turn. So I think this worked out fine. We are first to act next turn. Uh, not first to act, but first to have the ability to get Swordmaster. Unless Shadam gets. Actually, Shadam is either going to get for, uh, second or third. So hmm. it might have been a misplay on my part to go for a deliver supply uh sorry a spacing spy over a swordmaster spy but we'll see we get our three solari shadam gets his solari and gurney wins his combat okay all right another another non-worm combat sorry not non worm um a worm available combat okay So more devs might go for the alliance, might go for the uh, Benedict Sword alliance because he has branching paths. Um, we end up trapping our spice flow because uh, we luckily draw it. We get the spice word for using um, Erlon signaling. Hmm. This one was kind of unfortunate because we don't have we don't have any access in our hands. Well, not access. We could go with subcontract. I doubt anyone's gonna be going except Contra. Uh, 
Is there a world where we win this combat? I doubt it. Yes, uh, especially with the, with the hands, with our cards right now. I do not think it's possible for us to win the combat. Uh, Gunny does decide to break the wall. Interesting that he chose to break the wall on a... On a um, non-walled combat. Oh, secrets have been so nice here. Oh well, I mean, we don't have spy anymore, but yeah. We just place in one troop here, get another water. Um, and I think um, the next action is probably going to be if if we're allowed worms, we might go for worms. But I think here, um, since we're since we have both of our diplomacies coming, not diplomacy, one of them is over there, or the other one's a diplomacy. But since we have both of them coming up, um, and we have a spy on spacing, I think. We want to be pushing for a Highliner, so the Spice, yeah, if we get Spice, it's probably going to be uh, on Imperial Basin with Harvester just to get to Spice for Highliner. And as um, just as I said, Gurney picks up another 3 Sorter. Ooh, a lot of cards in Moadib's hand and no Spice was slow. We are currently lacking behind, but not for too long, I don't think. Especially, it depends on what next combat is. If the next combat has potential to be, um, if the next combat is like the Machinations combat, I forgot what it's called, um, Propaganda. If the next combat is Propaganda, this is going to be a difficult game for us. But any of the other three combats, I think we should be able to take it down relatively easily. Keep in mind that Gurney and um, Shaddam both do not have any, do not have Swordmasters. Ah, oh, it is propaganda. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Now we're in a, now we're in an interesting position. Do we, do we go secrets and go steal from both Modib and Shaddam? Because I think, I, I think, um, so, somebody made some conversion where it was like every two intrigues is like a point or something like that. And, I mean, I guess it works, because um, we just drew into Secure Spice Trade. We're probably going to be getting a Spice Flow this turn, and we already have one. Oh wait, but I trashed it. Mm, never mind then. Uh, Chome Profits? Not a, not, not relevant. Um, shifting Allegiances? Not uh, Shifting Allegiances. Change Allegiances is a, is a pretty good card, because if the Bendis Sword Alliance does get taken from us, then we can, in theory, um, shift away and invest that bump into another place. This combat having... Well, I mean, the wall is down anyway, because they're to to break it, so... But nobody has enough water to actually deploy. I decided that um, it's better right now just to go for a um, Spice Flow. I'm probably going to be playing my ring to research station and picking up Smuggler's Harvester. Um, and I believe it is a guaranteed draw for me to get Spice of Slow. If I draw, yeah, if I draw two cards, I mean, I'm sitting on six persuasion right now with uh, two convincing them right away. If I draw two cards, even if they're both one persuasion, I can still put Smuggler's Harvester in my hand. Uh, unfortunately, um, yeah, research station was taken away from us. Uh, the, the, hmm. the only way for me to draw a card would be at accept contract, and I would have to draw my one of my two persuasion cards. And I believe it's a two thirds draw. It's a sixty six percent chance that I draw a two persuasion card a uh, coster. Um, I might be I might be off though. Hmm. Let's see. I decided uh, not to take that chance. Um, just to you know, get some spice going for me. Yep. Um, I spend. I get two spice for uh, trashing by the way. The idea about trashing the prepare the way is that I'm probably going to be picking it up anyway because I have four persuasion. Um, nothing to do really. The good thing about this is the fact that 
Um, like no, none of the winners have worms in, which is really interesting. Um, like not in the winners, none of the possible winners. So like Gurney doesn't have any worms in, and Muad'Dib does not have any worms in. So this is gonna slow, like so this is gonna slow them down, which I'm totally happy with. Um, this combat is not. Well, if we win it, it's good. But uh, based on the intrigue that we've drawn, I don't. I do not think we're winning this. Uh, we can retreat and get a spy, but <laughs> oof. don't know the usefulness of that. Okay, all right. Mordev. If Mordev has unexpected allies, which is the intrigue that um, you spend two water and you break the wall and get a worm, and then he wins the combat, then this might be a top game for us because Mordev would. Mordeb again misses a spice of slow, okay. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, if uh, Mordeb has that card, then he can basically take the game down next turn without any competition. Uh, luckily for us, Shadam ends up retreating, so we are guaranteed third place. Uh, actually, whoa, really interesting. Three people end up retreating this combat, in this combat. Um, I simply just take my like six spice for one naked worm. We take it. I'm not gonna say the note. Uh, I'm not gonna say no to six spice, right? Um, luckily for us, we draw our diplomacy, and this combat is actually pretty good for us because we we are most likely gonna be sitting on eight spice, or if not eight spice, we might um, even get a point from change allegiances uh, if we shift out of. Benny and possibly take the Fremen Alliance before Muad'Dib gets an opportunity to. Um, I think this, I think this should be the last round, right? Because nobody really has the ability to beat us. Uh, we also have a spy on um, Haga Basin, so we are guaranteed a worm. Hmm. Unfortunately, I do not think we will be able to trigger Erlon's um, passive ability, which is if you hit two on the in uh, Emperor track, you get an entry. Uh, okay. Gurney just goes to contract and picks up his uh, friendship point. Moedeb goes to deliver supplies, picks up the alliance. Uh, Shaddam goes shipping and gets two bumps. One in Emperor. Oh, sorry, both in Emperor. Okay, Shaddam is charging for the Emperor alliance. Okay. Um, this is our second action, so we decide to just draw two cards instantly. And we put a Smuggler's Harvester into our hand, just to basically guarantee ourselves the Spice was Um, Right, because uh, we're definitely revealing the card right away, and we're definitely revealing the um, convincing argument. That's four Persuasion. Um, four more Persuasion from the four cards in our hand if we play our Overthrow. Hmm. Okay. This requires a lot of calculation, actually, because we want to make sure we get a pretty big win on this. Uh, not big win, but like we want to make sure we can end the game here, right? Um, we're gonna get two points from if we get a worm. In. If we get a worm, in, then we get hmm. We can get one more spice from Smuggler's Harvester, right? And that's eight spice. So then, based on that, we can get um, two points for winning combat, and then you can spend eight spice for the second condition. That's four points, and that should be able to end the game on ten. But if Muad'Dib has like end games, or like especially with the amount of intrigues he has, I feel like Muad'Dib might have some end games here. Um, and with High Council, I think he might also have a Spice of Slow, so he's going to be ending on 10 as well. And he definitely is going to be beating us on Spice Tiebreakers here, so our goal here is to end on 11. And I think the only way for us to end on 11 is if we take a risk here and end up shifting uh, with Benny Desperate. We end up shifting um, down in Benny Desperate and go up in front and just take the Alliance before Moedib does. If Mordeb takes the alliance in front of us, uh, a little unfortunate, but it's okay. Uh, we just guarantee ourselves the combat here. Um, I forget to play my entry, so I tell the people to wait here. 
Yep. Uh, we go down Dennis Jesperd, go up into Fremen. Um, okay, now it's just a time of, like, it just depends on if Mordid can take the alliance from us, or possibly even Gurning, because, I mean, maybe Gurning can take it from us? With two entries, I don't think he can, because we just play change allegiances. Um, I guess the only way that they can beat us anymore, like, take the alliance, is if they have buy access and the, um, one of the bump cards. Oh, sorry, not one of the bump cards, like, the bump card. You spend, um, you discard a card and get a bunch of sword or a friend of them, but that's pretty unlikely for him to have those two injuries. Anyways, uh, we reel here for a spice and slow, so we're gonna get another point there. We get two more swords. Um, okay, um, what did gets strategic stop call. Unfortunately, Mordev actually does not get a Spice of Slow, so... Okay. He does not even end on 10, okay. I guess there goes my worry. I mean, I wasn't... Okay. I think we should be able to win this game. I mean, unless Gurney has some end games, but... Ooh. Oh, Mordev has actually one Spice off of from Strategic Stockpiles, and one uh, Persuasion off of a Spice of Slow. That is unfortunate. With both of those, he would have been on 11. Could we have beaten him on 11? We're currently sitting on 8. Um. Okay, I mean, yeah, we definitely beat him on 11. Because I think we hit 12, right? Uh, yeah, if we get 4 points from this combat. Hmm. Uh, we get four points from this combat, and unfortunately, we we trash one of our spice slows, so we don't actually get um, secure spice trade. Um, the way it reads is that you must you must have two or more like the two or more of the cards in your deck, but we don't actually have or not in your deck, but like in, you must have acquired and like kept them around. Um, we unfortunately just acquired them and did not keep that spice slow around. Uh, so, the tape was hard to give me the point, um, yeah, I told him I just trashed one, so... Anyways, we end up winning the game, and we sit second at the table and go directly to quarterfinals, where the game should be played soon, actually. Um, Pookie absolutely dominated this group, played for one or four, um, no hesitation here. And... Good luck to the rest of the uh, rest, uh, Young Savage, Wobble Hulk, and Colby in the knockout stages.